of adventures for the price of a day. Get your SeaWorld Fun Card. Looking live right now, downtown Los Angeles. And oh, you know, about a quarter of an inch of, of snow. Big Bear, by the way. That was, we just got that in. Cool thing happened less than an hour ago at LAX. Very interesting thing. A plane carrying two huge concrete boom pumps. It took off at 5 o'clock this morning. Take a look at the pictures just in here in route to Japan. Mm -hmm. The 190,000 pound pumps will be used to help cool the Fuchisaki Dachiba nuclear power plant. They have an ex extendable boom that can reach more than 200 feet and can be operated by remote control, making it easier to shoot water into hard to reach places. And right now only one pump is being used at the plant. So it sounds like they could really use this. Yeah, they, they need that big stuff. There's only a few of those machines in the world. Uh, we have heard plenty over the past few weeks here, of course, about the effects of the radiation. And could it be felt here in Southern California is a question everyone wants to know. Sure, and, and with the rain, as he was just saying, we've been experiencing, we're wondering if any of it has been radioactive or could it be radioactive in the future? So joining us now via Skype is nuclear physicist Kai Vetter. Kai, thank you so much for getting up so early and joining us and hopefully you can help us uh, answer this question that's been on everyone's mind. The rain here in Southern California, are we gonna have, is it gonna be radioactive? First of all, good morning. Um, and uh, according to the measurements we have been doing for the by now more than three weeks, uh, yes, we do see some uh, nuclear materials and radioactive materials uh, which are being, have been released uh, by the Fukushima uh, plant in Japan. So yeah, we have been seeing that and we expect uh, to uh, continue to see that. Now, from, now, should we be concerned? Is it at levels where it could affect adults or our children? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, actually, as a matter of fact, I don't think uh, at all that will be uh, any uh, health effects. Uh, the m amount of radiation we see here from Japan, we have been seeing at the beginning, uh, are already very small, have been very small. Uh, they are declining, and even the next rain, uh, we expect, um, even though it might be slight increases compared to without the rain, uh, still much smaller than what we have been seeing three weeks ago. Um, and so therefore, uh, no harm uh, expected. Wow, a lot of people they, relieved to hear that. Yes, I think so. Us too. I mean, we mm -hmm. all uh, were uh, curious from the start uh, for, well, two reasons. One, uh, uh, scientifically interested to study the, uh, the kind of the pathways of these materials from Japan to here. Uh, just the fact that we see it here is very interesting. Mm -hmm. And then the, to the, path, the pathway in our environment, how these materials actually are transported and, dive, uh, and, uh, and dispersed in our environment. Well, we are but, so then, appreciative to get your expertise on this. You've, of course, worked with the STEAM group uh, there at the Lawrence Berkeley uh, National Nuclear Lab. And, and we thank you for getting up so early with us and explaining that. So we do have, uh, thank mm -hmm. you very much, Kai, appreciate it. You're, you're we welcome. do have some radiation in the rain, but they say at levels that we do not have to worry about. Yes. Thank goodness. Uh, yes, and now we're moving right along. We have been talking about this a lot, mm -hmm. what's been happening over at uh, Dodger Stadium, that violent attack. And we're going to be talking about two violent crimes that have two families crying for justice. One, the search continues for two suspects who beat a Giants fan at Dodger Stadium while family and friends remember the one-year anniversary of Monica Beresford Redmond's death in Mexico. It's a story we've been following closely. I was down in Mexico, down, yeah. yes, last May, and I can't believe it's already the year anniversary. Yeah, it was just, just uh, two days ago here, I believe. So here this morning to talk with us about the legal implications of both of these cases, attorney Allison Trissel, thank you so much thank for you. being oh, here. Oh, good to see good you. To Thanks see for you. getting up so early. My you pleasure. about the Dodgers uh, first. Anyone looking at this, I think, will say the Dodgers have not particularly reached out a lot to the victim's right. family. Uh, City of Los Angeles Angeles hasn't really reached out very much. Is that because they're fearful they're going to get sued? And if so, can that happen? Yes, they can get sued. The Dodgers can. They, they own this property. It's a very vast land. It's like 352 acres of property. And they had a duty to protect this person. You know, was this foreseeable? Well, a beating like this, I don't know if it was certainly foreseeable, but these are their rivals. These are the giants. Mm -hmm. The crowd at Dodger Stadium as of late has gotten a lot rougher. Mm -hmm. um, families tell me all the time, you know, we're worried. We're worried about bringing our yeah. kids. And so they certainly should have 
th this was a question of security and safety. And was this fan protected? Mm -hmm. um, you can't stop all things, and there are horrible acts of violence, but there should have been more security in the parking lot, no question. Okay. Yeah, we've been hearing on the radio, the cousin has been speaking out saying it took at least 15 minutes for security to even get there when they called. Now, everyone's been, city officials been begging these two men, the suspects, turn yourselves in. Is it more beneficial to them to turn themselves in? Will they get any kind of leniency or? They probably won't, but mm -hmm. what I think is money talks, and when there's a $150,000 reward, mm -hmm. somebody's gonna turn them in. You look at those two guys, and I disagree with you. I will not call them suspects. I call them cowards, call them thugs. Criminals, they're not a suspect of anything. Anyone who attacks a firefighter, a father of a, of a child, uh, a hero from behind, who yeah. hits someone from no, behind? No, it's senseless. Yeah. I mean, there, there is no reason for this kind of violence. Mm -hmm. I mean, this, sure. this is outrageous. But they will, I don't believe, because they're cowards, I don't believe they'll come forward, no. but I do believe that somebody close to them mm -hmm. will turn them in. Okay, and, and you and I have been working closely for the past year, uh, just touching on the, uh, the Monica Beresford Redmond story. It's, I can't believe it's been a year. What is next? I mean, from what we've been hearing that her ex-husband, who is a suspect in her murder, is going to be extradited to Mexico next month. Will that happen? Right, well the extradition hearing is set for May 16th mm -hmm. and um, a judge will make a decision whether or not he should be extradited. The standard is very low. It's not beyond a reasonable doubt. It's probable cause to believe that he was involved. Is this an extraditable offense, which it is, and is he the person that Mexico's looking for? Now the question will be, will the other side appeal? And if that happens, it can take up to a year, but he will remain, thankfully, in custody pending an appeal. Good, did they ever get DNA from under her fingernails? I know he had scratch marks in the back of his neck and on his hands and everything. Um, I think that's something that I'll have to answer a little bit later because okay. I know that this this has been, an, the, Mexico though has done an amazing job putting this case together. There's a lot of evidence that points toward his guilt. Yeah, okay. Once again, thank you so much for thank joining you so us. Thank you so much. Nice to see you. Nice to see uh -huh. you. Tell your, your son's birthday. Yeah, yeah. Happy birthday. Happy your birthday, birthday, Jacob. All right. Thank you uh, all. Time right now is 6.49 and we've got something very important for you next. I'm Gail Anderson. Are you desperately looking for one of these, but you're having a hard time finding a hybrid because gas prices are making them very popular? Well, one company says you can get a car that's great on gas, less than $30,000, and it's not a hybrid. Details when we come back. For the day's top stories, California's community college is facing serious funding cuts. Breaking news in Southern California. We're going to show you exactly what happened. And complete weather updates. Nothing but sunshine. Turn to KTLA 5 News, weeknights at 6 and 10. National University, your university. KTLA welcomes Chris Schauble to his new home, Channel 5. He's hit the ground running. What kind of pace are you shooting for? And now he's joining Megan, Henry, and Ginger for all the news, weather, and traffic you need to start your day right. Chris Schauble and Megan Henderson, 4.30 to 7 on the KTLA 5 Morning News. If the rising gas prices are getting it down, Gail Anderson has some suggestions. You don't have to own a hybrid to save money. These five, domestic and imports, all have something in common. They are just as economical as the popular and more expensive hybrids. The Chevy Aveo, the GMC Terrain, so we got an SUV in there, and we got the 2011 Jetta Sport Wagon in there. And all of these vehicles achieve 30 miles per gallon or higher. And that's not all. The NADA guide says there are two more imports that are great on gas and cost a lot less than, uh, one of these. One for about $15,000, the other for about $13,000. <laughs> mm -hmm. The Kia Soul, which is a neat little crossover vehicle from Kia. We got the Nissan Sentra in there. They're loaded with features that typically only come on luxury vehicles, and they're all under $30,000. Troy sure is sure of his information. That's because his research is available to all of us at his company's website. NADAguides.com. NADAguides.com is a vehicle pricing and information resource. And it's actually the largest publisher site out there for vehicle information. 
The Guide is becoming an important consumer vehicle buying tool because of rising gas prices and... The destruction in Japan and their inability to provide continuous power and energy to manufacture facilities. These are the facilities that actually build the cars, build the parts for the cars, and in some cases build the pigment for the paint that go on these cars. At the moment, there's no shortage of these five fuel-efficient finds. But now that you know what Snyder knows, there might be fewer due to more consumer wheeling and dealing. In Irvine, Gail Anderson, KTLA 5 News. I need a more fuel-efficient car. Mine was 70 bucks to fill up the other day. It hurt. Yeah, and they're getting better and better looking. There's, mm -hmm. you know, there's some nice models out there, so that's good to see. We'll be right back after this. We have asked to see your pictures of the weather this morning, and we're getting an eyewitness report. Take a look at this. Where's it from? It's from nice folks, Leo and Wendy in Beaumont, right over there by Bannister, east of uh, Moreno Valley. Was that frozen? Take a look. We got three inches of snow oh, overnight, snow. they say. Okay. Look at that. It almost looks like ice on that yeah. tree. All right, so, of course, everyone wants to know. When is that snow going to go away, or is there more cold weather on the way? A couple more flakes, uh, Fraser Park, the mountains north of Los Angeles here, uh, and even, uh, even areas around Valencia up in the mountains. We'll see just a quick little dusting, I say, around 10, 11 this morning. Okay. And maybe a sprinkle here and there in Orange County this morning. Once we get past 9 a.m., the drama is over, and we're set for a, a pretty nice day. Okay, so you could go sledding, Jay, with the family up in Fraser Park if you wanted to, yes? Or not enough? That's, that may be what you do. I, I like to sit have some chili. <laughs> Oh, come on, you gotta get outside a little bit. <laughs> I love that you like steak. I so appreciate it. You're an actual meat eater. You're a, a meat and potatoes kind of mm -hmm, gal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what can I, I love, say? I love that. All right, well, it's always great to catch a movie on the weekend, and there are some new ones out there, including Arthur. That's that funny movie starring mm -hmm. Russell Brand and Helen Mirren. And if you're up for something intense, you can check out the new thriller Hannah. Or there's Soul Surfer. That's that movie about the brave young surfer Bethany Hamilton who oh. didn't let a shark attack keep her from her favorite sport. She fought back and became a champion again. Also out, Your Highness, starring James Franco and Natalie Portman. Coming up on the KHLA Morning News tomorrow from 6 to 9. Otherwise known as the big show. Tomorrow's the three-hour three show. Three-hour, get ready, <laughs> yeah. We're live for the Ronald McDonald Walk in Anaheim where thousands of people, they're going to be hitting the streets all for good cause, Chris. Mm -hmm. Also, another big interview you're doing here. I am, yeah, later today, Pau Gasol. We're going to talk to him. He's doing great stuff for the uh, the victims of the tsunami and earthquake right. over in Japan. And, oh yeah, Sam on Sunday. Sam Rubin Skyping live, maybe from his bed, but definitely in a bathrobe. What on earth does he do on the weekends? And you, did, are you the one who talked him into it? Yeah. I figured. Mm -hmm. ah, well, I told him he'd get to you. talk to you. So no one, <laughs> no one says no to Mary Beth. Hey, anyone who's going to get up that early to talk to what us. What do you think? Thank you nice very job, much. Nice job, Miss. Oh, thank think you. Had a good oh, time. We have the, the guys on from... Uh, uh, good luck, Charlie, from the Disney that's right. show. I know it's a real big mm -hmm. hit if you have children, so that's going to be fun, too. We'll have these young, good-looking kids on tomorrow. All right, everyone, have a wonderful day. We will see you. Thank you so much for watching. Tell all your friends and family we need your support. KTLA Morning News.